Celine. Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Celine here. Long time no see. So I am very excited because I'm finally able to sit down and talk to you guys because I feel like I haven't done a video like this in a long time where I just sat down and answered some of your questions. This has been a very busy past few months for me. Um, I mean, I'm always busy. I'm always doing things. But since moving to New York City for college, I feel like I'm always doing something different every day and I'm always up to something new. So I'm just so happy to just take some minutes now to share with you guys my experiences in the past few months and answer some of your questions. So I asked on my Instagram, which is at Simply Celine, if you'd like to participate in my next uh, Q&A video, make sure to follow me on there because that's usually where I ask you guys to ask me questions. And this is what you guys asked. Do you find it hard to try and balance both school but also your channel at the same time? How do you manage it? Honestly, yes. Like, I have been doing YouTube for the past five years now, so I've kind of gotten the hang of, you know, when it's appropriate for me to film a video and when it's not, just in terms of, um, especially for my Turkish channel, in terms of, like, political times and just when I have schoolwork. Because if I know that I have a lot of things going on that week, I know it's going to be very difficult for me, not necessarily to film a video, but to edit it, because most of the time, it's editing that takes up most of my, um, spare time. When it comes to managing it, I think that you just have to make a list for yourself or at least some kind of schedule and just be aware of when you have two to three hours of your free time. Like for example, I know I have free time right now. Um, well not really, I actually should be working on my essay but you know what, it's okay. So Sophie here, who is actually one of the Code of Classy grads from Los Angeles is asking, what on earth is the key to academic success? And I don't think I have a recipe to academic success because we all have our setbacks, we all have our times when we don't do as well on something as we think we did. So. I would just say that you really just have to make a schedule for yourself and you have to know what is achievable and what is not achievable in a given amount of time. Like, for example, if you know that you have something very important coming up in the next week or so, like maybe you should try to get a head start on it. Maybe take it step by step so that way you're not super overwhelmed with it the day before or rather the night before because I know it's so easy to get caught up in all of your other fun things that you're doing in your life. So I would just say try to take it piece by piece and step by step. Someone's asking, what is your most embarrassing moment? And I don't have one embarrassing moment, guys. I constantly am embarrassing myself on the day daily basis, probably on like an hourly basis, honestly. But the most ex funny thing that I can think of at this very moment is when the other week I was with my friend Nikki and we went to the cafeteria and I only had like three hours of sleep just because I woke up to the sound of a jackhammer at 7 a.m in my dorm building, which was really not fun at all. But anyways, I didn't have much sleep and I wanted this smoothie and on the sign it said that there was this deal of the day where it was strawberries and bananas and protein. And honestly, I didn't really understand what they meant when they said protein because at my school they kind of call all types of meat protein. So I thought that they were going to put chicken in my smoothie. So I specifically asked, oh, like, what, is there going to be chicken in my smoothie? And everyone, and I mean everyone at the cafeteria stopped what they were doing, pointed and laughed at me because not only did the smoothie maker, like the chef, go, oh my gosh, that's so funny. She literally stopped and went, oh my god, everyone look, look at this girl. She thought that I was going to put chicken in her smoothie. So, I mean, I was laughing stock in that very moment, but things happen, you know, it's fine. One of my favorite girls from Code of Classy, Tali, is asking, what was your favorite thing about Code of Classy? Miss ya. I miss you too, girl. One of my favorite things about Code of Classy was just how close everyone got in such a short amount of time. I mean, it really amazes me how, how close we got within two weeks. And if you think about it, two weeks is a relatively short period of time to get to know someone, but we all were so close with one another. Like, there really wasn't anyone in particular that you were, like, not really close with or friendly with because everyone was always together. So I just loved how it was such a nice community. I was asking, what, um, how is my college life going? Honestly, it's going pretty well. I have been waiting for college for the longest time, so now that it's finally here, I'm just so happy to be living on it, living in my, living on my own. You know, doing things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It's just. I'm having a good time. Obviously, there are times where I'm very stressed out, and most of the time I am stressed out about schoolwork, but I think it's a process to learn how to organize your time and manage everything, which, I mean, if you start your good habits earlier on, it's easier to continue doing them in college. Like, it really hasn't been that difficult of a transition for me academically. Asking, how is life in New York specifically, and where would you want to live, if anything else, besides New York? Um, New York is really great. New York is very expensive, and I mean, I knew that coming here, but it's just, it's difficult because back home, it's like, even if it's only like two to three dollars more expensive on, you know, whether it be a food item or clothing, it's still like, it adds up really quickly and it's just a weird adjustment. But other than that, New York is really, it's New York. I love, I love it here. But 
anywhere else, honestly, with the current political atmospheres of both Turkey and uh, the United States, probably Canada, because I love, I love Trudeau. Justin Trudeau has my heart. <laughs> or France. I actually, I really love France. And I'm actually so excited because I'm going to France for a week um, towards Christmas, and then I'm actually going to Turkey for a week after that. So I'm just very excited because I love traveling and I love exploring new parts of the world. Okay, I don't know where I just left off because my SIM card was completely full, so I had to empty it out. Anyway, so someone from my Turkish channel was asking, like, how are you so lucky with, like, the whole Carly class thing going on? And just in general, it feels like you're always very lucky. Um, I don't know if I would consider myself lucky so much as just like trying to put myself out there because obviously like there are some things like if there's an opportunity there then obviously I want to take it but if you don't put yourself out there and you don't try to make connections and you don't try to network yourself then it really it makes it that much harder to do the things that you want to do if it involves, you know, reaching out to a number of people. Obviously, luck is a part of it, and it does depend on location. Like, if I wasn't in New York City, I don't know if I would be able to do a lot of the things that I like to do just because it's such a central and key location to just finding a lot of things because pretty much, um, I don't want to say everything happens here, but a lot of things do happen here in terms of whether it be the business world or whether it be entertainment industry, and just in general, New York City is a pretty central place. As for Code of Classy, someone's asking, do they give you a place to stay too, or did you have to pay for somewhere to stay in New York. Um, Code of Classy, once you're accepted, they do not pay for your housing, so you're expected to just kind of um, figure out um, how it's going to work for you. A lot of the girls there, they did do um, hotel systems. I, however, just took the train, so it was like a like a four hour commute every day, I want to say. So it was kind of long, but I mean, honestly, completely worth it. Like, I wouldn't even complain a single, single ounce of complaint in that because it was just, I felt so fortunate to be part of the program because I knew nothing about coding and I left knowing the very basics about it. So, I mean, I, I consider myself lucky to even just have been a part of the program and be surrounded by such incredible girls. So someone's asking about the difficulties in living in a cosmopolitan city. And honestly, there's just as many difficult things as there are many great things, but one of the struggles I found that I knew coming into it was that um, as I walk to class, I do experience catcalling quite a bit, sexual harassment by, you know, whether it be the construction workers on the street or just like someone like whistling or looking at me in like a weird way. And I'm, honestly, like there's things that can be done to avoid situations like this. I personally don't really get involved. Most of the time, I feel like I shouldn't really respond because I feel like I'm giving the other people the power. And I feel like most of the time when men do do this, because usually it is men, um, I feel like it's just kind of a way to boost their ego even if they don't necessarily expect anything back from it but the second you give into it it's like it's like it's feeding more into their ego and like boosting their confidence and just to know that someone responded back to their condescending tone thank you so much for watching this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to follow me on all social media make sure to subscribe to see more whether it be video videos like this or whether it be college vlogs I've been trying to do a lot of more personal vlogs lately I just feel like Again, like they're more personal and I feel like I'm able to reach out to you guys in like a more realistic way. Although I try to be as realistic as I possibly can and try not to like put on a performance when I'm doing videos. Um, I think doing like the handheld vlogs, like it definitely helps me uh, show my real self and my day to day life. So if you guys enjoy watching those videos, please comment down below because I definitely want to hear your outfits on those because if you guys don't like watching them, then I'm probably not going to do them. So let me know what you think and what you want to see in the future and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye everyone!